Hey guys, this is week 12 of Hell Beneath You. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get more stuff done. Uh, as you can probably hear, I am getting a lot better with my throat. Um, the cold that I've been having and the sinus infection is uh, slowly finally clearing away. So that's good. Um, just in case I'm still not going to do physical therapy just yet this week. I did schedule it for next week though. So hopefully I'll be able to get back to that and finish it. So I guess in the new year, I can get like a final prognostic on my shoulders and whatnot, but hopefully it should be good news. I've been feeling pretty good despite kind of hurting my shoulders a little bit by accidents here and there, but um, it's nowhere near as bad as when I first started doing this series when I hadn't even gone to physical therapy yet, yet and a whole bunch of stuff has happened. Wow, I'm, I'm approaching, I believe, 80 days now out of the 100, and it feels like all a blur, to be honest. I'm probably going to forget a lot of stuff because yes, so many has happened and I'll probably remember once I start putting up these episodes. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get some of the writing done. As I said in the previous videos, I am in a bit of a block in terms of hell beneath you, um, specifically in the writing stage. Um, after going a little back and forth, as I mentioned before, between um, whether splitting the first issue into a prologue and a first issue due to the big tonal difference between how it started and how it ended, and doing that and having the prologue written, I really haven't, I've really been kind of struggling a bit to kind of balance out that first issue a little bit. Part of me almost feels like maybe just reincorporating the whole thing as just one issue, but we'll see, you know, just take it slowly. Again, this is something that I want to be not perfect, but definitely one of the best stories I've done. So I really want to keep challenging myself and pushing myself and not settling for just whatever I do first. So I hopefully I will be working more on that later on as well. I'm also trying to push out more of the strips and web comics as well, as well as doing my podcasts, of course, and um, doing also alternate videos for my YouTube channel. Um, it's been getting, gaining a couple of subscribers, so that makes me happy. Um, the views are actually starting to go up quite a bit. The same thing with the podcast, actually, on Podomatic. People are still uh, going to the older episodes and actually listening to them and downloading them as well, which really does mean a lot. So I think it's pretty secure to say that I will be making a season two of the Serene Chaos podcast. Uh, when it comes the time to do more next year and whatnot, after I take that small break after uh, episode 12. Uh, let's see, like, again, I have to kind of take it slow and pace myself so I won't burn myself out or overwhelm myself by doing too many things at the same time. Anyway, um, that'll be it for this intro. Hopefully there'll be more stuff moving on for this week and let's get to it as i mentioned in last week's video um i have been recording episode five of enter the danger zone well not enter the danger zone that's the um youtube videos um of the serene chaos podcast and i had actually accidentally uh, started recording having the uh, headsets plugged in instead of the microphone so nothing was recorded uh, throughout that whole time that I was doing it so I got kind of upset at myself and um, yes stopped um, thinking about recording over the next few days because you know I shouldn't be that hard on myself but 
I do have other projects that I want to um, move forward. So I just kind of took a small break from that until I finally got around to doing it today. Um, it's actually not 14 minutes long. A uh, funny story. Um, I was recording it and right in the middle of doing the first part, um, I accidentally knocked some stuff over and the uh, microphone got disconnected. The tablet fell over. Uh, it was quite a disaster. So I had to kind of split it into two parts and put it together on the laptop. So that's pretty much what I did. And um, I'll be uploading this later in the week um, onto my Patreon, of course, for the Patreon early access feature. So that'll be fun. Um, I should be getting more. I should be doing more Patreon stuff, but I've been kind of um, chewing off a bit more than I can chew. Like biting off a bit more than I can chew, I guess, in terms of juggling a lot of things right now, especially... It's December, it's the holidays, so a lot of personal stuff as well. Um, so I'm probably going to be lacking a little bit in the Patreon department up until maybe January. But I'll definitely try to do a good push to have a balanced um, content out there on my Patreon, on Facebook, on the web comics, on the website, on YouTube, and of course the podcast as well. I did it. I finally, I finally got through the first draft. I finally got through the first draft of Helping If You issue number one. It was more exhaustive than I ever would have thought, especially for a first draft. I usually don't take this much time and usually don't get as stuck as I've been getting writing with this one. But I guess it's also because I'm putting too much pressure on myself, maybe. Like, I think that's kind of like the realization that I had once I kind of like acknowledged that and managed to calm my, myself down. I just sat down, read what I had and, you know, did it. It's been a long road to get to this point, man. Like, if you've been watching this from the beginning, I really do appreciate it and appreciate the patience and actually giving updates on the comic itself since I know sometimes it's been a little bit sparse because, again, situations happening and I'm also taking my time and also since I'm doing the Scott Snyder online writing class, uh, there's a lot of things that I really can't show either because if I did, it would also spoil um, his classes. And I don't want to be that guy that puts out there what the classes are about, you know. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted from my shoulders just to get that first draft done for issue number one. And again, it's not like an incredibly detailed script. It's more or less reminiscent of my Fred Peterson, The Mighty Warlord strips, where I write just enough to have like the basic premise of the issue, the beats of the story, and um, of course, the, um, some dialogue as well to go along to like give me a sense of what's going to happen in this scene and in that scene and to kind of get that mood and tone of the story and the plot moving forward, especially uh, when I break it down into scenes and the beat of the story. But it is a little more detailed than the usual Warlord script though, because I do kind of put like specifically um, this is the opening, uh, this is the middle, and this is the ending to this particular issue. <sighs> I 
I'm sorry, I'm a bit emotional. It's it's been quite a journey so far. All right, as I said in the previous segment, um, I went ahead and finally finished the first draft for issue number one of Hell Beneath You. Um, this is the binder where I'm printing out the scripts and putting it together to kind of make it easier for me to just go over them and make notes. Like, I could definitely do that on my tablet or even on my phone. But when it comes to scripts and whatnot, when I want to do notes and read things over, I still prefer that feel of uh, having the physical uh, script with me. So if you bear with me, um, as I showed you guys previously, here is the prologue that I wrote again. I can't like show too much and Boom. Hell beneath you, issue one, first draft. Here it is. Of course, it's a tad bit longer than the prologue. It's because the prologue is intended only to be around 12 pages. It's going to be essentially like the introduction into the world and kind of, you know, started off in an eerie kind of dreadful way to kind of you know set the tone of how the series is going to become eventually as well so that small segment was really fun to write um it's one of the most fun uh scripts i think i've ever written at least uh, in my opinion um <laughs> especially because again i'm really into the whole horror thing, even though I haven't really done much with uh, horror at all. Uh, the closest would probably be some elements in Fred Peterson, The Mighty Warlord, and in Delta Task Force 6. And maybe a tiny bit in the Funny Bone novellas as well. So, yeah. I have two scripts printed out now for Hell Beneath You, which is going to make it a lot easier for when I start doing all the uh, designing for the characters and locations and the scenes and whatnot. Um, again, if my voice is cracking a little bit, it is kind of a big emotional deal to be able to talk about this and, you know, actually have... Uh, a script's written. And here we are with um, episode four of season two of the Serene Chaos podcast. Um, this has been so much fun to do. Um, and this episode, I uh, talked about the visual aspect of doing Fred Peterson, The Mighty Warlord. Um, in the previous episode, I spoke about the writing process of it, and it's had a pretty good reception. Um, pretty much like the original one also had a pretty good reception, but this one was a bit more updated, so that was kind of cool. And of course, now here is the visual production of Fred Peterson, The Mighty Warlord. Um, it was pretty cool to talk about that aspect of how I come up with the pages and break it down uh, based on those scripts that I've written. Um, so far, it's been doing very well as well. Um, once again, I am so grateful for the people that are listening to the new podcast and are going back and downloading and listening to the originals, even though I do... Uh, do that disclaimer that the original first three episodes are essentially uh, episodes two, three, and um, this one, episode four. Um, but m these episodes are more updated and a, a little more current with what I'm doing right now compared to what I was doing back in 2015, 2016, and whatnot. So this has been a fun adventure um, doing these podcasts again. Um, they've been well received. Um, 
on Podomatic and on YouTube as well when I start uploading them there. Um, some people have been listening to it as well in the early access at Patreon. Once again, www.patreon.com slash Danger. For just a little as $1 a month, you can listen to all the podcasts and early access. Uh, you can download digital versions of my comic books, download exclusive art, high resolution artwork. And there's also a ton of free stuff as well if you don't want to um, go ahead and join for a dollar. So there's about like about 90% of my content is free over there. So you can definitely do that as well. Um, I've really been having a lot of fun doing these podcasts again. Speaking previously on the podcast that I have problems recording um, and also Patreon, um, it is time to have issue, uh, issue, I wish, uh, episode five of the Serene Chaos podcast up for early access for my patrons. Here it is. It is my writing process for my web strip, never mind. Um, if you don't know my web strip, never mind. Um, that is the web strip that's slice of life autobiographical. It's just one page with a couple of panels. Uh, usually it's just a splash play. Uh, ugh, my tongue can't talk right now. Uh, words are hard. Anyway, it ranges from splash pages to about a couple of panels, maybe at the most five to eight panels, depending on the story. Um, it really is a fun strip to make. Um, I'm trying to do season two as well as possible so I can print it out as soon as possible uh, next year. Uh, it was supposed to have come out this year, but of course, with everything that went on, everything was really set back. So... I'm pushing forward, never mind, the Cannon Girl, as you've seen as well, uh, Wepamani Wepito, also, uh, Stupid the Cat, um, I actually, I think I'm going to do a different version of issue number one of Stupid the Cat, because it's a mini comic, but it comes out to like about four dollars, because it's in color on Indie Planet. So I was thinking about doing a black and white version and kind of do a new cover and a dedication to our cat that passed away, Fiona. So I, I might do that. So I'm still thinking about it because I do want it to be more affordable, especially since it's a mini comic. Um, I, I wouldn't want it to be like pretty much almost the price of a full-sized 20 page comic when it's like a 12 page mini comic if that makes sense anyway but yeah i am going to um ponder about that i'll likely come to a decision by the end of the year or in january about what i'm going to do about uh, with that especially since i am going to be um getting physical copies printed of Nevermind to uh, sell in comic book shops hopefully next year as well. Uh, that's one big goal for 2022 to finally have uh, my own comics in comic book shops and also try to do an activity here and there as well if the uh, pandemic doesn't keep rising again at the rate that it is. Fingers crossed. And I kind of want to keep up with my goal that I kind of established for myself um, since late November and now early December. Uh, I do want to, originally I was going to upload a video every Thursday, but I find that that's a little bit easier for myself, especially schedule-wise, to 
and just do it every Friday instead. So I am going to be uploading a new video every Friday on my YouTube channel. Um, it's going to be kind of a mix of the podcast as you see here. Um, it is going to be one week behind um, the Podomatic updates and whatnot. So um, issue number, um, I keep calling them issues. Um, I definitely have issues, but that's another conversation for another day. Um, episode four of the podcast is right now available on Podomatic. Episode five was made available for early access. And now episode three, the writing process of Fred Peterson, the Mighty Warlord, is now uploaded into YouTube as well. So the original three podcasts and the first three podcasts of season two are now completely available on YouTube as well. Um, as, um, as number four will be going up when number five goes up in Podomatic and so on and so forth. So it's kind of a bit of a chain reaction, kind of like a domino effect in a way um, where it'll start off on Patreon after it starts in Patreon, it'll make its way to Podomatic. And after it's made its way to Podomatic, uh, that's when it'll end up on YouTube. Um, it's kind of to give a fair shake at the people that prefer to do it on just on um, Patreon or the people that just want to do it on the podcast hosting sites like Podomatic or Spotify and, you know, then also give um, the option for YouTube as well for the people that just prefer to listen to YouTube rather than um, listening at uh, Spotify or Apple Podcast and whatnot. So I just kind of want to distribute it um, as evenly as possible and also to not overwhelm myself by giving myself too much to do by myself personally uploading everything everywhere um if i had money to get an assistant um that would be something that i would definitely delegate like help me upload this here and there so that everything could be up relatively at the same time but so i can pace myself with content and also not burn myself out it's better to kind of just um do like the slow churn like do it slowly, but make it to the goal, you know, kind of like the turtle and the hare in that aspect. All right, this, um, I don't know if to call it a cover reveal because I likely will have showed it off before this um, ever makes it to YouTube, but I just finished, um, Redoing the cover for the Mighty Fred Pierce and the Mighty Warlord prologue. Um, just to have like a bit of context, this is the original um, one that I was going to do for the Truthful Comics edition. As you can see, it has like the quote unquote bullet logo, which was kind of like a homage to DC and whatnot. And kind of like the more old school comic book logos from Marvel and DC and all that. So um, I have put that one there. Of course, I had um, done this image of Fred and Jane together. But I always felt kind of off with this cover. I always felt like I could do better with it. Uh, I felt like the angles were off, the proportions were off, especially on Jane's face and head. And even though I tried to like frame it as well as possible with the uh, boulder and the trees and whatnot, it, it felt kind of forced to me personally. Uh, I felt like this cover wasn't working at all. So I went ahead and remade it. And it kind of has more of the feel of the um, Studio 22 cover, where it's kind of like sunny, um, they're enjoying their time together. Uh, it feels a lot more like a postcard rather than uh, compared to that other cover that I did. And also I went with the more 
um, traditional, not traditional, but the logo that's been used more frequently, especially for uh, Project New Wave. And I felt like I wanted to like make that distinction that, okay, Warlord is also going to have that kind of studio logo because I want to like keep that like kind of throwback bullet logo for the stuff like this for the mini comics, just to kind of like show that difference where, okay, the bullet logo is going to have like the more intimate, smaller, introspective, or just plain experimental comics. And meanwhile, the covers that have uh, this logo, let me just move that there so that the reflection isn't too bad. The covers that have that Truthful Comics logo um, is going to be more like the superhero uh, kind of stories, the stories that are like more in the 20 to 24 page range. Um, that's going to be a full-sized comic, traditional comic in that sense. Um, I did decide to make uh, the prologue in black and white like I had done it previously. Also to kind of have that, uh, to distinguish between it being like a main story and just a side story for the comic as well. And also to kind of make it a little easier on the pockets too, on the people that might be interested in buying it. So the prologue is going to be in black and white. Uh, I probably will make a color version available later on when it's collected. Um, I do have an idea of kind of doing different kind of tiers of how to publish it so people can have variety and have a choice of how to buy it. Um, they can definitely buy the single issue floppies like a traditional comic, or they can wait and get it in a trade to kind of read it as a graphic novel. And I am going to be offering like kind of two ways of doing that. Um, there's or two or three actually. Um, there is going to be the manga sized volumes that'll be black and white. Uh, you'll have like about six, seven issues in one volume. So it'll be kind of like a traditional manga Toboken in that sense. Tobik, Toboken, pretty much the word of trade paperback in Japanese as well. In black and white and whatnot, kind of like when they collect the mangas from their manga magazines and put it into one volume in black and white. And there it is. And there's also what I'm going to be make available a black and white full comic sized version of it as well of the trades. And eventually I'll probably make like the perfect edition where everything is in color and maybe add additional bonus pages and whatnot. So yeah, I want to offer like more variety and choices for people to like get it either um, to get what's more affordable or to get the more pricier kind of stuff as well. You know, I do want to kind of have that in mind. So I was organizing my workspace so I can kind of make it more efficient. And I actually ran into this while I was kind of unpacking some things. And it's a manga practice kit that I bought at, I believe it was five below or something. It was only like about $5. And I bought it because I thought it would be a fun thing to do. And I also was keeping in mind that if I did need surgery or depending on how bad my shoulders would be, this would be kind of like a fun thing to do while my shoulder kind of and my bicep gets better. But now that I find it and my shoulders are starting to feel a lot better and that I've been doing the whole illustrating with my left hand kind of to challenge myself, um, I actually decided I would make an interesting video series or live streams for my YouTube to yes, go through each lesson left-handed um, as I go and kind of just do an art stream for it. Um, tonight I was watching uh, the YouTube of another Puerto Rican creator called Tommy Villarreal. And I was looking at his filming techniques for his um, art streams and tutorials. And I thought that's actually 
pretty inventive. I'm going to have to steal that for myself and try to like experiment and see how far um, I can go with that idea and push it as well. And it'll offer more variety into my YouTube channel as well. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it in previous segments. I do want to um, do at least one upload every Friday. And it's going to be a mix between the uploads of the podcast, episodes of The Danger Zone, and any other thing that I think would be either entertaining or creative for myself to kind of pursue. And um, every now and again, I would like to keep doing live streams because they're just really fun to do. Um, this year, I really have been embracing doing live streams, even if it is like at odd hours, because it's just a, a fun thing to do, to be honest. Like, I've had a lot of fun doing the random live streams where I just talk about stuff or I show off what I'm working on or I show off what I'm reading or talk about comics in general and sometimes pop culture. Um, it's really a fun thing to do and something to do. I kind of wish I had done it more, especially during uh, the shutdown period of the pandemic last year. But, but again, like these things sometimes take their times to kind of develop in you. So uh, my desire to do these live streams, just something that happened kind of relatively recently um, around the time that I was recovering from COVID, which again, like doing these live streams kind of helped me cope with the stress and uh, just like the ongoing stress of having gone through COVID and a lot of other things as well throughout the year. So yeah, hopefully look forward to this live streaming sometime next week, I guess, or maybe I'll just make a video series. Um, I have time to um, decide. Hey guys, another week has come to its end, and what an end. Um, as I said before in the previous segments, I have the first draft to the prologue to Hell Beneath You, I have the first draft to issue one of Hell Beneath You. And now today I officially, oops, got kind of stuck there. I have the first draft to issue two. Yeah. Here it is. So now I have three scripts in its first draft stage uh, it's almost like uh, finishing the first script draft finally kind of opened this um, I don't know it, it just lifted a lot of weight and pressure off my shoulders I guess and the second draft was so much easier to write compared to the issue one first draft like it came a lot more naturally and things were really flowy. I felt like I was really in the zone, in a great groove writing that uh, first draft for issue number two. Uh, it is one of the more emotional issues in this mini series, And I guess emotion is one of the best things that I'm good at writing, or at least that's what I've been told anyway. So it did feel great to finally have not one but two first drafts done this week and um i think i had mentioned it before that i have sent the prologue a couple of episodes back to um, some colleagues to kind of get their feedback as of this recording i still haven't heard back um i don't know if it's because it's that bad or because they're that busy or whatnot but i'm not the kind of person that's going to like keep pressuring them to do it if they haven't gone around to do it just yet. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to be less introvert. Uh, blah. I'm thinking of being less introverted and just reach out to other classmates from Scott Snyder's uh, writing class in the Discord 
just to kind of like say like, hey, I have this written and I would just like some feedback. Um, for that, I'll probably do it when I do the second draft, which would be more of a full script. Because um, since I am thinking about just taking advantage of doing like the whole feedback with other classmates and whatnot, I, I may as well do it as a full script just so I can get that feedback and improve whatever I can improve, have uh, a fresh pair of eyes read it as well, so which is always pretty helpful to do since I really don't have um, anyone to um, read that to. So yeah, that'll be, uh, that would be pretty cool to be able to uh, have that banter back and forth with someone to kind of go over uh, what you've written and whatnot, uh, especially with something like this, which I'm uh, giving my absolute best to try and make one of the best stories that I've ever done. You know, this is this has been quite a challenge uh, to do this comic, especially when I decided that I was going to um, record the first hundred days of doing this, uh, attempting to do this comic that I've been pretty passionate for about the last couple of years that I really, really want to get out there. And I really do appreciate all the people that have been liking and commenting on the images since the first time I started putting it up. Um, funny thing is, is that those images of Hell Beneath You that I put on my uh, Facebook artist page, uh, which by the way, you can find as Serene Chaos, the art of Ivado Cortez Jr. on Facebook. Um, it's actually the only set of illustrations that gets more engagement and more reach than Warlord itself, actually. So that's kind of exciting in a way to see that people are reacting so well to this story and this concept so far. So as I said, now with three scripts in their first drafts, that is going to make it a lot easier for me to just start designing the characters that are going to be in it, the environments, the backgrounds, the settings, um, how to set the tone visually for the story to match the writing as well. Um, I think things are starting to like take a big upswing in momentum um, the past couple of weeks in that sense. I think also working on other projects throughout doing this as well, like Warlord and Nevermind and uh, doing YouTube again, doing my podcasts again. Um, that's kind of helped me push forward and not stay um, stationary, you know. It's forced me to keep moving forward creatively, even if I get stuck on one aspect that moves ex extremely slowly. I'm moving forward at a much better pace, something else creatively. So I'm still doing something creative every single day. And it's not going to like hold me back or make me feel bad about myself that I'm not putting enough content out there or that I'm not pushing myself hard enough to actually achieve the comic book goals that I have for myself, especially after such a rough, rough 2021 and it's been rough for everyone, but again, I feel like like the universe is playing a prank on me because I said that 2020 for me personally wasn't that bad of a year, and it didn't change my lifestyle that much. Hindsight is literally 2020, my friends. Anyway, I'm going to cut this video here. Um, next week is going to be very eventful physical-wise. Um, I was actually going to start my physical therapy tomorrow, but there was a small miscommunication when I did the, the appointment, and it was accidentally canceled. So I'm going to be doing it on Thursday, the day before Christmas Eve. And um, on Tuesday, I'm actually going to have a small um, procedure done, a small dental procedure. Um, I'll get more into it next week when I talk about it as well. Um, so I don't know how that will actually affect me because it is a relatively, it's not a very simple procedure. Uh, it's probably going to knock me on my ass for a couple of days, but I will be 
recording and doing as best as possible to, you know, catalog that as part of this whole journey of comic book making, which again, it's, you never know what's going to happen next sometimes. Um, anyway, um, thank you guys as always for watching. I hope you found something of value in all of these videos that I've been making. If Eddie was watching by this point still, um, I am eternally grateful for all the support I've been having with the various projects throughout the year. Uh, by the time this comes out, it's going to be well into 2022. So hopefully I'll be even more productive by the time this video comes out and I'll have more things to show around. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do like a season two of The Long Road to Hell. Maybe I will do like another hundreds type video again, but maybe focus it on a different project. I don't know if enough people watch this and ask for more of uh, Hell Beneath You specifically, then I'll do that. If not, I'll probably do like a 100 days kind of things for like the Fred Peterson, The Mighty Warlord, Two Full Comics Edition or something like that. I guess to do something different every year or something. Anyway, once again, thank you all so much for uh, listening, for watching. Once again, this has been a flawless victory, and I hope to catch you guys next time.